Hello, my name is Cheryl Wilson and I'm an abstract artist. And if you are already subscribed to my channel, thank you for supporting me. And those that haven't yet, um, I'm an abstract artist and I download, I try to at least once a week. I'd love for you to subscribe. Um, I am going to be doing an art challenge uh, for the next five days. So this would be a good time to join up with, um, with me if, if you want. And I also have a link to a Facebook page where people can post their, um, any art pieces or artworks that they want to share or ask me a question about, and I'll share that down below. And I also, um, have, uh, I'll, I'll, every day I'll be giving you full instructions on the, the art challenge. And the reason why I decided to do this is, um, for me, when I've done times in my life as an artist, structured or more structured uh, projects or uh, set aside challenges or times, I've really grown as an artist. And there's a lot of benefits to an art challenge. And, you know, I, I'm hoping that I'll give you some challenges that will explore a little bit about yourself, uh, your inner critic, um, your style, um, where you're going as an artist, and will hopefully, at the end, open some doors for you, and um, you'll see some growth in your art journey. And um, I wrote down some thoughts so that I wouldn't forget to share them with you. But the purpose is to allow each of us to look deeper into our creative souls and explore uh, in a creative way what inspires us, what heightens us, and to increase our productivity. The first benefit from uh, joining an art challenge is that it does provide a structure for you for the next five days to sit down and do art. Um, if you're like me, I can get in the art studio and I just start working on pieces and I'll grab one here and one there. And I realize that there is a time what is important for me to sit back and take some time to be inspired and reflect on some things that will help me grow as an artist. The second benefit um, to setting aside time to do this challenge, it allows you time to be creative and to start thinking in a creative zone that you might not normally think um, to create in. And hopefully that will in turn help your um, improve some skills or just improve your, your journey. And a third benefit is it's a great way to do art with other artists, to do art with me, to do art with other artists in the Facebook group, or just to, to share your art um, out on Instagram. And there'll be a hashtag. My uh, art um, training platform is the Intentional Artist. And there'll be a hashtag Intentional Artist. And I'll put that down below if you want to share and just talk about your journey and talk about some of the things why you might create some of the things as we go through the five days it is my hope that you will expand your boundaries and challenge your comfort zone as an artist and i hope you will allow time to set aside um, a type of a schedule for yourself to do this art challenge and that it will translate into some things you might want to do year after year and um it will allow you to help practice and hone in on some skills that you may learn i've never done this before my youtube channel it's always been a private thing that i've done but when i've done it myself in my own practice it's it's been i've i can go back and look at my art journey and i can specifically point to times when I've done things like this, where I've learned something new that has been embedded into who I am as an, as an artist. So that leads me into day one, which I'm going to go ahead and explore here. And I will um, be popping up 
some pictures here, and that is uh, self-reflection. The reason why I think this is important is uh, every year um, we do, or maybe we don't uh, do um, resolutions at the beginning of every year. I don't really in my personal life because I'm I'm in my 60s now and I basically know what it is I have to work on and what I what I need to work on for the good and the bad. But for my art journey, I do take the time and I paint a self-portrait. And it's maybe not the self-portrait that you think, but it's a it's a self abstract self-portrait and it just allows me time to reflect on who I am, what I'm doing, and it allows me to set goals for myself. And it's it's a process which you take the time to look within yourself and start to understand who you want to be as an artist in 2022. This is a great time. It's January. We can get started and beginning of the year. What are your current values? Where do you want to go? It's a form of personal analysis that allows you to bring your personal life into alignment with your art journey. And it may not sound um, as important um, as I think it will be to you, but I have found when I do my, my um, self-reflection, it helps get me grounded and started in my year. So the things you're going to need, and I will write them out on them, I will have them in, in uh, when we get started, is I want you to draw a figure on uh, a piece of paper. If you have watercolor paper, that is the best paper to use for this particular, um, the paints we're gonna use. But if you don't, I do show an example. Um, the second video will be an example that is on like a gray tone paper, but it's not watercolor. So the water doesn't flow as smoothly, but you can still get a beautiful effect. And um, then I want you to write a self-reflection about yourself. When, just think about it while you're painting. And then afterwards, just start write down what you were thinking about. Um, what are some of the things that you reflect as yourself as an artist? The things that maybe areas where you want to grow. Um, maybe just self-affirmations or words that you want to um, write down. And that will help you and you could put up on a piece of paper beside you when you paint. Um, you can have it as elaborate as you want or as simple as you want. And then you don't need to share this um, in the Facebook uh, group that we have. But if you want to, you're more than welcome to share and talk about your self-reflection as yourself as an artist. Um, Reflecting on where we've been as an artist and where we want to go is really important. And um, it this will allow you time, even though it's a one day, um, it's something that you can do over and over again. These are the two that I actually paint, although I've shown you others. These are the two. This is, this is on the watercolor paper. And this is on the regular paper. Um, these aren't anything elaborate. Um, they're not anything that, um, you know, I may sell. But they're, it's the process of doing the self-reflection and looking at myself as an artist and asking myself questions and writing down words for me. And that's, that's what I do. Um, be be bolder um be more um in tune to taking risks as an artist things like that so i hope that this will be helpful to you if anything um maybe you'll have some fun and maybe you'll meet somebody new in the facebook group but i'm going to get started on the video and um talk a little bit when i do the video so i hope you join me and i hope this is fun for you
All right, I start here with, um, uh, this is actually the watercolor paper. And I just draw a figure. Um, for this practice, It's it can be any figure that you want freehand. Um, you can look at ideas on Pinterest or or if you're great at drawing the anatomy, you can just draw. This is not me. I am um, not this thin, but I do like to draw the female body, and I think it's it's just a way for me just to express a um, a beauty that I enjoy, and so uh, that's why I I draw her probably way way too thin, but it's it's just what comes out. It's it's what inspires me and what comes out. Um, I don't know how to draw the female body very well so um this is just the the creation that i come up with and i'm doing two like this so you can see the effects of how it looks like if you don't have watercolor paper but i start and i do have an entire video i'll link down below on um that goes into more depth on using the um um, acrylic inks here and I do throw in some of the high flow acrylics from Golden but I just put down with a paintbrush that is the appropriate size um, water on the space that I'm going to be adding the acrylic inks and when you dab the ink on the body it does just flow out and she ends up being primarily the blues and the greens and i am doing this at a, a faster speed i don't work this fast but the idea is not to create something that is a masterpiece or create something that you'll necessarily sell but just create something that reflects um your self-reflection and for me it's just creating um a figure and filling it in it's relaxing for me and while i'm doing this i'm just thinking of, to myself um about who i am as an artist where i've come what i want to be i don't look at who i'm competing with that's so easy for us to do as artists and i don't look at other people's social media and compare um, I love when other people have successes and I do share uh, many of my successes out there in social media because that's important for us as artists to to share especially when people follow you and have uh, encouraged you along the way but um, this particular time is a time for me to go back and reflect on what's important to me as an artist what are the things that i want to keep doing that are working for me what are some of the things i want to change and um i will write them down i will write them in a journey i do several of these and um i have had people ask me i have uh, had people write down their thoughts for me and i have painted figures uh, for them um it is not something that i feel that i do particularly really well um, I do sell some on Etsy but I'm getting off track here but my point is is this does not have to be a beautiful figure it's just time for you to reflect on who you are as an artist what do you want in 2022 where do you want to go I even set myself goals and um, when I reflect on where I've come and where I want to go I will set down a lofty goal, a goal that may be a little bit higher. Um, that's how I've been able to achieve some of the things that I've done is because I have set goals and I have um, looked to find out how to get where I want to go. Um, I remember when I wanted to sell my first international painting. I set that as a goal and I put myself out there. I remember when I wanted to be on HGTV I went out and I researched um, how I could make that happen. Um, when I wanted to uh, put my art on online galleries or I wanted to do my first show, my first solo show. Those are all things that I did put down 
and um, as a goal at the beginning of the year, and I work towards them. Hopefully I'll be able to share more uh, tips later on, but one of the things that I do is I will many times start backwards. So say I want to do a my first um, solo art show. I will put that down on a mind map and then I'll work backwards, um, breaking it down into smaller pieces. And so I have chunks of things that I can do and I know when I need to do them. And th that takes work. But the purpose of this particular exercise is to start reflecting on you as an artist and what are some of the things you want to do to get there. Maybe you need to reflect on becoming more uh, self-confident in yourself as an artist. And maybe that means putting your art out there. I put many pieces of my art out there in the beginning and um, I had to accept um, no comments. I had to accept uh, some mean comments and even when I was in an art gallery um, because I am very abstract I had to have um, come face to face with comments that people made to me about um, people who wanted more of a uh, art that was representational and they would make comments about my art and that was okay because I knew that um, I was abstract. So if it's self-confidence, work on that. Put that down as a, um, a, a word that you want to have in your on your piece of paper in front of you. Um, taking risks for me has been vital. So that's always a word that I put down is to take risk. I am not afraid to mess up a piece of paper so that I can take risks to get to where I want to go. Um, it's a risk for me to do my YouTube channel. It's a risk for me to show you painting um, a figure like this because I don't feel like I'm I'm the best, but that's not the purpose. And um, I only say that is because, you know, I want you to feel free to know that if you're not good at painting a self-portrait or painting a, a figure, um, that's not the purpose of this exercise and this challenge. The purpose is to just give yourself a chance to reflect on who you are, where you want to go, what are some of the things. I started writing my own quotations, coming up with my own, and that was really good for me. So that's something that I will continue to do. Um, I did start off on a couple paths um, in the last three th couple years that didn't work for me. So I didn't count them as failures. I took them off my list and I moved on with other things. So this is a time to look at what works for you, what doesn't. Go deep as to uh, reflecting on um, what words of self-affirmation you need to work on. Um, a big thing is the inner critic. And there'll be, um, um, later I'll talk more about that. But the inner critic can really get to you. It can stop you from going into your art studio for weeks, and it has for me. Um, but you have to get past the fact that you are only, I guess, basically in, in I don't want to say competition, but you're just, you're on your own art journey. You're moving towards your own goals and where you want to go. And nobody else can tell you that your art is good or bad, or no one else can tell you that, you know, you're on the wrong path. Those are things for you to decide and come up with. So, um, you can see I've created her, um, Art-wise, I do go in on the gold splatters and I mesh them in to make it more of a, a very cloudy, muty background. But I'm going to let you watch uh, me create. The purpose is not to um, learn how to create her, but to um, just create something that will be fun and in the end have a 
list of things that you have learned from your self-reflection. In the second painting, I wanted it to be the same so that you could kind of follow along. So I use tracing paper and I trace the figure on a piece of paper. And then I just went over the um, actual figure a little bit darker. So you can use any type of tracing pa paper. I use Strathmore a lot of times but I traced it and I did it a lot darker so that when I pressed down on the pencil, an outline showed up on the, and that's kind of like a gray tone paper. It's kind of an interesting paper, but this is if you don't have watercolor paper. This um, will not absorb the acrylic ink or the uh, any high flow that you might put on it. But it gets a very interesting um, um, effect and I added a lot of gold into this one which I think turned out really really pretty and um, it's the same thing it was just another chance for me to relax and I do a lot of the same concepts so I'm going to put this on a little higher speed and just let you watch me paint As you see, since this is not watercolor paper, which is perfectly fine, it doesn't soak in. Watercolor paper is made so when you put water on it, the pigment of whatever you put on there soaks in. You just have to be aware of the different types of properties that are with whatever it is that you're doing, and um, which makes it fine. So. It flows and I'm still playing with the different colors and enjoying the play and um, I that white bottle was some of the golden white titanium white high flow.
as I wind up this um, day one of self-reflection, I hope you enjoyed this and, and I hope that, that this was helpful to you and I hope you join me for day two. Day two is going to be addressing your inner critic and um, I will explain how I overcame my inner critic, some things that I do in my art journey to, on a daily basis sometimes, address my inner critic because just because I feel like I have learned to understand my inner critic does not mean that she's gone away. Um, she pops up now and then. So uh, come back tomorrow and I will um, talk about the inner critic, your inner critic. And again, thank you so much for joining me and uh, I appreciate you being here.